Welcome to the Munchkin Minute, your twice monthly look into some tabletop gaming news and more. I'm your host, Dan Dan, Board Game Manager News for the end of June 2024. So it's that time of year. Not only has convention season gotten into full swing with Origins this past weekend, but the SDJ and KDJ announcements were this week. So that's the Spiel des Jahres and the Kinder Spiel des Jahres, and of course the Kinder Spiel des Jahres, which is the children's game of the year. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, today I'm going to go into some of the release announcements and also into the SDJ uh, and some hotness from Origins before we get into some crowdfunding as well. So let's start with the award announcements. I saw these listed from on BGG with uh, Debbie Eric Martin does an amazing job uh, with a write-up for the SCJ and KDJ stuff. So I'm just going to kind of go into the SCJ a little bit more uh, and then I'll just mention the uh, KDJ stuff. So the thing to remember that these are games that came out in Germany last year and were submitted to the committee. So there's always some games that are, uh, yeah, in the last year, but some we haven't seen here in the U.S. And of course, also some that we have been here in the U.S., uh, for the last couple of years, but also go into Germany, uh, usually at a later time. So that's happened over the years a little bit as well. So the nominees for the 2024 Spiel des Jahres or the Game of the Year uh, is uh, 2024 are the first one I'll talk about is Captain Flip. This is from Reno Conzadori, Pablo Mori, uh, sorry, Paolo Mori, not Pablo, Paolo Mori, uh, and from Playpunk. This is a cool one, a uh, very, very easy game to teach and to play. Is basically you have a board, which is your ship. You know, a lot of times a pirate ship or a cracking ship, basically a ship that has about five rows. You're going to take a tile out of the bag and you're going to look at it. Try only to look at one side. You're going to decide to use this tile and its ability for the one side. And if you do not want it, then you flip it. But once you flip it, you're stuck with that side. So there's some really cool kind of push your luck in it as the game is going on. You're going to be getting coins throughout the game, depending on the different sides. Sides will be cool because they'll either give you a coin or maybe flip over something next to it, or you can uh, just grab coins or some set collection things that are in there as well. So very, very cool game. Plays in 20 minutes. All of these SDJs were very, very short games, less than 30 minutes each one of them. Uh, great game right there. This next one I'm going to talk about is Sky Team. Uh, from Scorpion Mask and Luke Raymond. Uh, the thing about Sky Team is, to me, it feels more like a KDJ because of the weight of it. So it's a little unusual for a game. Not that it's that complex. It is still a short game, but there's still a lot more complexity going on in this game than I think usually goes on with uh, SDJ type games. But anyway, a great game where you and another player, so you're basically a two-player game only, you're trying to land a plane at an airport. They have a lot of different airports in there and a lot of different difficulties. So you're rolling dice and you cannot really communicate during the game and you're going to be placing these dice out. You're going to have to do things like put the flaps, change the flaps up. You're going to be getting coffee, which can help to uh, mess with the dice rolls or help you, not mess with dice rolls, but help you to adjust the dice rolls, uh, mess with your, you know, change your altitude, change your speed. Very, very cool. Use your radio to get planes out of the way. There's a lot going on, but it is a really satisfying game. Uh, it takes a little bit to get used to it as far as the teach goes. But once you get it, and basically after one game, you're good to go. It's a really solid game, uh, Sky Team. Uh, there you go. Number three, In the Footsteps of Darwin. This is another very, very light game. It's basically just a drafting game. You've got a little chit that's represented by, you know, basically you're going around the outside of this uh, nine by nine, I'm sorry, three by three or nine tile grid, which you're going to be drafting. You've got a boat tile, which uh, represents the beagle from Darwin, uh, the, his boat that went around the world. And as you're going around the outside of the board, that's going to determine where you can draft. Depending on what you draft is going to be where the boat goes next. So you can kind of mess with the other players a little bit. Uh, it's just very, very light. Uh, I think it's the lightest of the three, even though, I don't know, Captain Flip is pretty light too. But this one has a little bit of set collection uh, and a little bit going on there. The strategy is kind of in the sets that you collect and how you get the points and kind of uh, some of the other upgrades that you get. So that is In the Footsteps of Darwin from Sorry We Are French. Uh, my pick's going to be Captain Flip. I just think it's the easiest of them all. And actually, not necessarily the easiest of them all, but just the most fun for what you're getting out of it. The other two are excellent, excellent games, uh, but that's going to be the one that I think would be my pick. So the recommendations from the committee are Harmonies, which is another great game, Past Nitscht, uh, Phantom Inc., Sacht, if you can, uh, Trekking Through History, and Trio. Uh, so the uh, KDJ, which is the Kenner Spiel des Jahres, kind of they call it the kind of the connoisseurs game or the more uh, gamery game uh, players is kind of a little bit more, you know, kind of your medium weight, a lot of times the medium weight euros. Uh, the Guild of Merchant, well, I'm still sorry, the Guild of Merchant Explorers uh, from Matthew Dunson and Brett Gilbert and AEG. Ticket to Ride Legacy, Legends of the West uh, from Alan Moon, Rob Davio and Matt Leacock and Days of Wonder and Daybreak also from Matt Leacock, uh, Matteo Menapace and uh, Schmidt Spiel in Germany uh, or CMYK. 
uh, over here. Uh, three solid games, and also the recommendations were Beer, Ponier, uh, Botanicus, Far Shuffle, another great game, and Ritual. Uh, I'd love, you know, I think you can't go wrong with picking a Ticket to Ride game for these winners, but uh, all three of these are great games. Uh, but I'll say Ticket to Ride as my prediction. We'll see if, because uh, uh, that is a really cool legacy game, the Ticket to Ride legacy. So fresh off that Sky Team announcement from the SDJ, Scorpion Mask has announced the expansion to Sky Team. This is Sky Team Turbulence. This will be out later this year. Uh, it should be about $13. Uh, I figure you'll see some demos of this. Who knows, maybe even a few copies for sale at Gen Con in August. Uh, but it does look very cool. Uh, you know, adds a little bit of difficulty to it and a little more. Uh, I know there's more um, airports in it, a little bit more things to do. So very, very cool there. So another hot tip from BGG and W. Eric Martin. Uh, when I think I saw some people chatting about on the Major Spoilers Discord is Avalon Hill is releasing the latest edition of Talisman, along with an expansion of Talisman 5th edition that's going to bring co-op elements and kind of a campaign element to it as well. So you've got Talisman, the Magical Quest game, uh, which is the 5th re- edition. I believe it's also coming out on Steam not short, not very long after that, shortly after that. This will be out this month uh, or next month in July. Should be about $60 that I saw on Amazon. Uh, and Talisman Alliances, Fate Beckons, uh, that's also out in July. That'll be about $40. And I believe you'll probably need the base game for that. So about $100 if you want to get both of those together. Next up, Ravensburger is going to be released another Horrified. I love, absolutely love Horrified. These games are so good. Such great family games. This one is Horrified World of Monsters. This one should be out in August and $30. The cool thing about Horrified is you don't even need to go to Gen Con because I bet this will be out in Target before it even gets to Gen Con. Uh, so this is a standalone game. Uh, very easily, same same kind of gameplay. Uh, they've got some other unique co- uh, challenges that will be on there. But you've got the uh, Riddle of the Sphinx, the Yeti, the Yang Shi and the great old one itself, Cthulhu. Uh, and everything's got its own uh, way of playing, obviously, with the different villains as you are there. Very easy one hour game to play. I mean, I say easy, but it's a kind of a lighter medium euro. I mean, it's a it's funny you try to figure out the best way to explain is you got the light games, kind of the medium games, the light to medium games. This is kind of the light to medium because it's not quite perfectly light, but not quite hard or, or medium either. But yes, check it out. Horrified in August. All right, Lucky Ducks is going, Lucky Duck Games is going to release Quartz, the dice game, also in August. This should be out. This should be one of their big releases at Gen Con. It should be about $20 to $25. Uh, this is kind of like off that, it's uh, it's based off the original game of Quartz, which became a Snow White Gemstone mining game. And it's kind of a drafting card playing game. And Quartz, uh, the dice game, is going to be right up that kind of same alley where you're going to be mining crystals. You're going to be drawing crystals from the bag, placing it in a cart, and depending on the type of crystal it's going to be, you're going to get a marker. You're going to roll some dice. You're going to get some actions. It's going to be another kind of cool one-hour wonder, three to six players. Uh, and if it's anything like kind of the regular game, of course, it's going to be a little bit of screw your neighbor in there, but in a fun way. It's very light game, so it's very much a uh, you know family weight game, but there's some fun screw your neighbor in there as well. But that should be very, very fun. Uh, after a gigantic Kickstarter, I think this one was over six million US, uh, Asmodee is going to release that altered TCG. They've said that it's going to be out in September of this year, that full release. Uh, this brings the thought that could be a, a big thing people run to at Gen Con. Uh, I can't imagine, uh, or I don't know, or basing it off the fact that so many people back this one at Kickstarter, maybe anyone that already wants it has it already, but I can't imagine Asmodee is going to miss an opportunity to have this uh, in events at Gen Con. So they'll probably have at least a little bit of product there for people to run to. Because, I mean, there, of course, is going to be huge big box displays there. I mean, Amaz- I mean, Asmodee loves money, so why wouldn't they have it there? Anyway, there's going to be a lot of big box displays, packs, releases. That's going to be with the big release. Uh, and, it's, of course, it's on BGA if you want to give it a shot. I do recommend you check it out at BGA. I've said that kind of when the Kickstarter was out. Um, it's not the greatest thing that's uh, since sliced bread, but I do admit I did enjoy it quite a bit. It has a different kind of gameplay other than a normal just smash each other in the head until you get to zero health like most CCGs do or, or just getting to basically enough damage or whatever like a lot of the CCGs do out there. So it is a little bit different. I do like the gameplay. So very, very cool. Check that one out. That's the Altered TCG. So, and speaking of running for everything at Gen Con, Ravensburger has announced the next big set for Lurkana. This one is called Shimmering Skies. This one will also be out in August. Uh, and this will be one of those that, that they release. First, it's going to be at the uh, FLGS 
Uh, they say Disney stores. Is that even a thing? I think there's one in London. Uh, and I think, I don't even know where else the Disney stores are these days. And also at Disney parks. So people may want to go there. Maybe they're trying to draw people to the parks. That'll be early August for that. And then you'll get the mass retail stores uh, and Disney store online at the end of August. So it remains to be seen if they'll be at Gen Con. But again, Asmodee and Ravens- Ravensburger, they probably like money. And they do realize they will sell out incredibly quickly at Gen Con. So I have to think that they'll have product that they will pre-sell at Gen Con. And again, all these events, these world qualifiers and world events and stuff like that, they're all at Gen Con. So they've got to have some of that. Um, But if you're smart, like me, don't wait in these lines at Gen Con unless you're really that much of a collector because you'll be there all day. If it's anything like the past, you'll be there for 12 hours or something trying just to get a couple of cards or however they let you get. So just enjoy Gen Con. Enjoy. Take it all in. Buy some games. But don't wait on the lines that are that long. So as I mentioned earlier, Origins was this past weekend. And here's a couple of titles that I saw at kind of the Origins hotness. I did mention on Kickstarter, I think it was last episode, uh, Daba Walla. It was just on Kickstarter. I covered it last show. And I played it, and I absolutely love it. Uh, it's a really great game, very easy to get into, great to play, good family weight game. I'm sure I'll be mentioning it a lot in the future with some Game of the Year lists, uh, but it made a big splash at Origins, and I believe uh, they had some sell to sell, and they sold out. Look for this to be high, like I said, on a hotness for Gen Con as well, and also many of the Game of the Year listings. SETI from CGE, I did talk about this one. Uh, that's the search for, uh, search for extraterrestrial uh, intelligence, I believe that's what it is. Search for ex- extraterrestrial intelligence. That one is uh, one of four player. That's going to be from GGE. That's a little bit more of a heavier weight euro, but man, it looks great. Uh, I did cover that on the April Munchkin Land. Uh, there's also a game called Sausage Sizzle. Uh, this is a fun little game from the brands. Uh, this was out, I think, about 10 years ago, but it's re-releasing in the U.S. a new version by 25th Century Games. Uh, it looked really cool. Uh, when I saw some buddies playing that one. So very cool, light, kind of dice rolling, push you to luck kind of game. And of course, From the Moon, uh, which is from Hachette Games. I believe this one will be out in July. This is another one that's kind of a heavier weight Euro. It's got some pretty cool worker placement elements where you're kind of moving your different types of workers around the moon and then placing them and depending on which type of worker it is and what upgrades you have, it does different things there. That's uh, kind of probably going to be about a two-hour playtime there. But that one also looked very, very cool. Let's head on into crowdfunding before we get out of here today. Uh, first up, Unstoppable, a card crafting game by John D. Clare. I love everything that John D. Clare puts out. We've had him on the Geek All Stars a bunch of times. A very, very cool guy. This has got about a week to go as of this recording. Well, well funded. This is kind of uses this card crafting. It's a one to two player game, but to me, it kind of has this roguelike place to, with the deck building. So I think this really is going to be shine at a one player uh, area. And the reason why they kind of kind of call it a roguelike is your Azure. Uh, getting the momentum and going through the runs. Uh, it's going to get more difficulty and then you're going to unlock other things. But what's cool, the card crafting system, as you're uh, kind of have a certain amount of cards and as you're kind of upgrading some of your cards, you're also then making it difficult, more difficult for yourself because it's going to make the cards that are on the other side even stronger as well. And that's going to be your adversaries as you're going through the deck. Very cool system. Johnny Clark does a really good job. This is about $60 to get in on it with a whole bunch of other ways to get in on this one. This one is being put out by Renegade Game Studios. I highly recommend you check this one out uh, or get it when it comes out of retail. It'll definitely be out of retail, but looks awesome. I got to say, there's a lot of good extras that you can get by backing this one. Next up, uh, kind of another very cool accessible game. This one's called Peaks. This one is by Tangerine Games. You can get in on this one for about $50. Uh, I think there's a little bit more of an upgrade that's going to be about $70 that looks a little bit better. This is a pretty cool game about kind of climbing mountains and peaks of the world. Uh, it's got a, some kind of almost like semi-co-op elements where as you're kind of playing the game and you're upgrading yourself, you can then join other players to go up peaks, making it a little bit easier. Uh, but it's cool because you've got some companions you can get. You can upgrade your different abilities. You're going to be getting equipment and then climbing different places uh, of the world. It looks amazing. It's a pretty good deal uh, at that. Plays in about an hour to two hours, uh, and it looks good. And it also uh, has a solo version, which I absolutely love. Uh, This next one is called Ada's Dream. This is a medium-heavy Euro game with a dice rondelle, which I absolutely love, kind of things like this, with the dice as workers and on a rondelle. And you're going to be working with Ava Lovelace to build the first mechanical computer. Uh, It's pretty cool how you've got kind of dice drafting, using them on your kind of tableau, and then kind of upgrading them and using that, uh, that rondelle, if you will. Looks great. 
absolutely amazing. Uh, $57 for the retail edition. And of course, they've got the Kickstarter exclusive deluxe, which is only $69. Looks like you've got a lot of, a lot in there. And of course, there's the collector's edition, which is about $100. Well, well funded. Another one, it's about a week to go. Uh, but check that one out. I do like, uh, they do a lot of really good production as far as Alicat games go. Uh, so this one looks pretty solid as well. This is a, next one is a second edition of a game that's kind of built off of some older games as well, but did make a good splash. This is called Trekking the World. Uh, you're racing your friends around the most iconic destinations in the world. Uh, there is going to be a solo mode in this second edition. Uh, this is pretty cool because as you're going around the world in only about an hour, very easy to very accessible games, um, you know, you're going to go to different destinations. You're going to drafting things like itineraries. You're going to getting souvenirs, getting other powers that are, powers are going to help you throughout the game. And then some pretty cool combos that you can get throughout the game. This is from Underdog Games. Only at $40 to get in on this one. And you can get a bucket list expansion, which in with that, a second edition for a total of $50. So very, very easy to get into this. The art is amazing in this game, uh, and it is a pretty cool game to play. This next one has been around for a while, uh, but I'm not sure I've ever seen it or played it. This is from Get Gray Fox Games or putting out by King Raccoon Games. This is... Su- uh, Sukuyumi, 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 the Amaratasu, sorry, Amaterasu Rising. That's Su- Sukuyumi full, rune, full Moon Dawn returns once more with an all new expansions and a full reprint. This game is pretty big, sprawling, kind of miniatures on a map. A lot of things going on. Another one of these games where there's so much crap going on that Dan absolutely loves it. So it's pretty cool because you're drafting a lot of different things. So you've got your faction, then you're going to help build the world to suit kind of your faction and then play from there. Uh, this one, uh, if anybody out there has played this one, I'd love to hear about it on the Discord or on Twitter. Definitely hit me up and let me know. You can get it on a starter pack plus stretch goals for about $100. Uh, you can go the returning back or all in for $145. Uh, then there's the all in reduced price for about $300. Boy, that's a lot. But this game is sprawling. So if you do like this or if you played it and you want to get all the new stuff, uh, it might be worth it for you there as well. These are all Kickstarter today. I didn't really see anything in GameFound that I thought was great. So uh, we're just sticking with Kickstarter for today. Uh, the next one, Artifacts. That's A-R-T-E-F-A-C-T-S, Artifacts. Uh, this one is... Going to be put out by uh, this. This company is Fabulous Factory. Uh, this is a kind of a man. There's a lot of stuff going on. This is kind of one of these kitchen sink games where there's so much going on that it's even hard to explain because you're kind of building an artifact uh, or quote unquote artifact, and you're putting it out there to battle other people. But you've got kind of the different boards that are going on. Uh, there's almost like few different mini games going on, which is really cool. So uh, it's really hard for me to explain it because there's so much mini games going on. Uh, you can get this all in for about 128 and for everything that's in there, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, there's all in gameplay and the 28 inch minis for 169 with that, or the larger minis, which you can get in for about 211. I do like the price of that regular game though, being about 128, because you're going to get a lot of stuff in there. This one is funded, uh, only a few days to go. So as soon as you see this, you may want to get in there. But of course, this is another one of those games where I'm sure you'll be able to get in to get in on it late. So check out Artifacts. Uh, and just, uh, check it out. Let me know if, if, uh, what you think about this one too. Cause I kind of like the kitchen sink games. Uh, they're not something I play every week, but it, you know, I call it kitchen sink cause there's all these different mechanisms and mini games going on. That is just a lot of stuff, uh, to, to take in rather than just a regular work or placement game. And finally, the last one I want to talk about is casual game insider. Uh, I like to cover this one every year. Uh, it's basically a board game magazine. This is the 13th year they're doing it. It's got about three weeks to go. It is funded. Uh, you can get just a digital edition where you can read it all, or you can get the print edition, both in there and both affordable. I think you can get the print edition for about uh, $25. Uh, and and our, you can get the digital edition for a year for $15. It's not a bad deal these days. Uh, you can get the limited digital uh, print upgrade. Um, and they also have, I think they also have kind of these things where you can get like the, uh, you know, your, throughout your whole, you know, lifetime uh, subscriptions and stuff like that. But I, uh, I've subscribed to this for a few years. I do like reading all this, not just board games. There's a lot of kind of pop culture and other games in there as well. And also they have some kind of, I will call them print and play, but there's games inside the uh, inside the magazine as well. But I always love it. They do a great job. Casual Insider, uh, Chris James and Stratus Games does a real good job for a casual game insider. So definitely uh, check that one out as well. Thanks for joining me today. If you see any news you think I'd like to feature, shoot me a message at Geek Jock Dan on Twitter. And of course, check out the Major Spoilers Discord, where I love to chat all about board games there. Uh, also, please check out the other Majorspoilers.com uh, shows for great content by Steven and the rest of the Major Spoilers crew. And also check out the Geek All-Stars podcast. That's my show 
uh, as well. As always, I'm Dan Dan Board Game Man. I'll see everyone in a few weeks for another Munch Minute. And of course, uh, everybody out there, have a happy 4th of July. And for the rest of the world, enjoy your beginning of July. I'll see everybody next time. This podcast is copyright 2024 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.